Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about autoimmunity and B12 deficiencies. B12 deficiency is called megaloblastic anemia. Basically, the red blood cell becomes enlarged and the total number of red blood cells becomes small. So, megaloblastic anemia, very large red blood cells and a decrease in those cells. Okay? There are two forms. One is called acquired. The acquired B12 deficiency, or sometimes folic acid deficiency, is a lack of B12 due to diet. Right? Either you're not taking enough B12 in your diet, uh, such as a, a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, or medications will reduce the absorption of B12 or deplete B12. Some of the medications are called metformin, coltracine, which is for gout, PPI or proton pump inhibitor, histamine 2 receptor antagonist for allergies, and alcohol will also create B12 deficiencies. If you want to supplement with, with B12, the natural forms are called methylcobalamin, hydroxycobalamin, and adenosylcobalamin. There is a synthetic form called cyanocobalamin, which you can also utilize. I like to stick with the natural forms. I prefer to use methylcobalamin. Sometimes we'll use the other two forms in conjunction with methylcobalamin. Now, let's get into the autoimmune version of megaloblastic anemia. The autoimmune version is called pernicious anemia, right? So pernicious anemia is a form of megaloblastic anemia, autoimmune in nature. Basically, your body's own uh, immune system is attacking the parietal cells of your stomach as well as the intrinsic factor, okay? Antibodies to intrinsic factor and parietal cells. Parietal cells produce intrinsic factor and HCL or hydrochloric acid. So if you have an autoimmune attack on your parietal cells of the stomach, one, you're going to lack B12. Two, you're not going to produce enough uh, hydrochloric acid to make your stomach acidic to break down your proteins, fats, etc. Now there's another cell called chief cells produced and they produce pepsinogen. And pepsinogen is broken down to pepsin for digestion, but you need HCL to do that. So if you have an attack on your parietal cells due to autoimmunity, you will not go from pepsinogen to pepsin for digestion uh, purposes. So you need HCL also. Now the other autoimmune version is when it's attacking just the intrinsic factor. Okay? Intrinsic factor is very important for transport of B12. Now, if you have a lot of B12 in your system, some of it gets through into the bloodstream through diffusion, right? It'll just get into a concentration high enough where it'll diffuse into the bloodstream to a certain extent. But primarily, the, you need the intrinsic factor tr to transport B12 to the ileum of the small intestine for absorption, right? So when you have an autoimmune version of this, you can have a immune attack on the parietal cells and the parietal cells are the, are the ones that produce intrinsic factor, or you can have an autoimmune attack on the intrinsic factor itself, all right? So let's go into some of the summary, right? What forms of B12? If you have an autoimmune version, what can you do, okay? One, you can use intramuscular injections of B12, okay, to get your B12 levels up to decrease your MCV or mean corpuscular volume. Another way is sublinguals, so you take drops and it'll absorb through the, uh, the buccal mucosa and get your B12 levels up. Uh, another way is to use it through the skin. So there are creams available with B12 that can absorb through the skin. So those are the three primary methods. Usually the injections work pretty well in getting the levels up, okay? So uh, markers. You want to look for antibodies for parietal cells, antibodies for intrinsic factor on regular lab work that you can run. You can also look to see if your MCV is elevated. Anything above 90 to 92, you suspect that you have B12 deficiency. You can also check homocysteine, which can indicate in need for B6, 9, and 12. Okay? You can also check methylmalonic acid which is a better indication of B12 deficiency rather than serum B12. 
Serum B12 can be elevated. If you just take a little B12, it can go up, right? But you have to understand how it works. So some of these other markers are better in terms of determining if you have B12 deficiency. So if you're taking B12, right, and your MCV is still elevated, you have to suspect that you may have an autoimmune condition. So you should check for parietal cell and intrinsic factor antibodies. If you have those two, you might want to consider intramuscular injections, sublinguals, uh, sometimes the transdermal forms may work. Um, but you have to understand what is going on and what's creating your uh, fatigue levels. Now, I made another video on B12, which kind of goes into all the different benefits and, and, and studies and dosing and so forth. So I'll link that video below. But essentially, you have to understand that anemia is not just iron deficiency. It can be related to B12, and some of the causes can be rectified by using different methods of supplementation. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.